Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to try something a little different. We're going to look at the history of porta bands. It's a fascinating tool, they're used very heavily in industry, and they're super handy to have around, even in the home shop. So let's dig into them and let's see how they evolved. Uh, we're going to especially look at Milwaukee porta bands because that's particularly what I have here, but it's really interesting to look at how the tools evolve over time. Let's get into it. While we were unable to find the original version of the Porta Bands, um, we did find some older versions uh, like this Greenlee 521. It is a two speed saw. It was, uh, I believe, made for, for Greenlee by Ensley. And um, there's other tools from the period where Rockwell started designing Porta Bands themselves. Uh, they started with, uh, I believe, the 728. It was a two speed Porta Band as well which led to the Porter Cable 725. You can see that looks very similar. And in fact, there was actually a Greenlee version of this sold also. Um, then Rockwell redesigned it. Uh, they went to their 7721, which was uh, carried through Porter Cable and even into DeWalt, as you can see here. This is a DeWalt version of that saw. Then. As time went on, DeWalt upgraded their uh, Porta Band in the mid 2000s, and um, they were the first ones that that I saw in the trades to have the light, the rubberized corners, and uh, overall they were a pretty decent saw. And for today's purpose, though, we're going to take a little bit closer look at the Milwaukee's. Um, Milwaukee started in 1973 with uh, two-speed saw, much like we saw some of the other earlier ones utilized. Uh, Milwaukee also used the 44 and 7 8 by half blade. And Milwaukee's saw, while I don't have the depth of cut on the others, Milwaukee's was three and a half inches deep, and they said they could cut something four and a half inches wide. Um, Milwaukee sold a, vari a variation of blades, uh, six teeth per inch, and at this time in 1973, you didn't see variable pitch blades yet. Uh, that's something that uh, we'll take a look at a little bit later. But that's where the Porta Band started for Milwaukee. And we're going to run through some other catalogs here and look at some other innovations that the Porta Band got throughout the years. From 1973 to 1978, the Porta Band for Milwaukee did not see any major changes. Um, by 1978 catalog, you can see, however, that they have a chop saw type base. Uh, it's an early version. It's not the same one that we later have. And uh, it's something that they're starting to, you know, create some versatility for the tool. By 1984, we can see that they have a new version of the Porta bandsaw table, which is very much, if not exactly, the same version that we see today. But we can see that they're advertising variable speed control, which would be a beginning stages of solid state tools. Uh, the variable speed tools would only run on AC voltage, where the two speed tools would run on DC voltage as well. That's a big deal because a lot of older generators were 120 volt DC. In fact, some older welders and stuff like that actually utilized uh, 120 volt DC outlets. So having an old two speed tool in order to plug into those things is actually kind of advantageous. By the time we get to 1986, we can see now that they have a deep cut saw like we're used to today and it is able to cut four and three quarter inch depth. That's a big deal. Um, it created a lot more versatility in the trades. This saw also was able to be bolted up to the portable bandsaw table, much like the one we have in our own shop here. We also see the beginning of 1986, we have a variable pitch blade, which is 10 to 14 teeth per inch. This is a big deal because Variable pitch blades uh, reduce chatter greatly, and they also allow you to cut through things faster because you're changing the amount of teeth per inch, which it gives you a different amount of bite. So that was also kind of a big deal for the time. While we see the trigger speed, or variable speed, is offered in this time, we do not see a two-speed version of the deep cut saw. 1990 gives us a little bit more options, whereas the deep cut saw is available in a two-speed 
saw and it's also average size as AC or DC motor which all static universal motors will run on AC or DC because it's self commutating but uh, that's the first time we see that in a deep cut saw. So here we have the early version of Milwaukee's Portaban. Uh, you can tell and we'll look at another one here later but you can tell by the gearbox here uh, these smaller cut saws uh, or the smaller portaban of the early years they had a different gearbox and it was more squared off like this um, you can see where the rollers are at here this is about where the end of the blade would be and you can see it is right at that three and a half inches that they talked about and from the tip of the guard which has definitely seen better days on this one to the wheels here we do have that four and a half inches of cut uh, this design saw is is pretty much identical to what they had originally uh, the early ones did have Milwaukee in the motor housing here which is a bit of a difference this is a I don't, this one doesn't have the nameplate but I'd guess it's sometime in the in the 90s this is probably from that era this one does have a good motor but unfortunately a lot of these suffer from a broken rear casting now that is a pretty dangerous condition and you do not want to run that out in the field if you have one of these uh, if some clipboard warrior safety person comes by you probably will get waxed for that um, we have a new gearbox for this one that's what you'd have to do to repair that to take all this off remove the gearbox put all everything back in this one will get a new guard for this will be a restoration on the channel here at some point but we're just not there yet this is the two speed uh, version not variable speed you can hear the uh, affirmative click and here's your speed controller high and low so this is a two speed version this is pretty much what the original Milwaukee bandsaw looked like we'll move on to a newer version next version you'd be likely to see would be bare aluminum this makes this one a little bit older uh, that previous one was painted so it's a little bit newer than this but the older ones were also bare aluminum so this one's bare aluminum and it's got the early version of the variable speed trigger you can see it pivots at the top very hard and it has a red uh, lock so if you tighten this or I should say turn this all the way this way it's basically a little screw and you make it so that the trigger can't come out as far or I should say go in as far you can see it only with my arm in the way you can see right there's the end of travel it doesn't go so far so we'll turn that all the way the other way and now you'll be able to see the trigger moves much further so that's how you could kind of lock the variable speed so you could only go one speed with them but you can see the saw is designed a little bit differently now you have a much deeper cut uh, you could actually get close to five and a half inches uh, depth wise here <clears throat> and it's offset so the straight plane of the blade is just about clearing the motor housing so you can cut pretty long things that are half inch or so you can get it past here but you're still limited to about four and three quarter here so it did open up things a little bit but you still can't quite cut a full stick of four inch pipe without ringing it around a little bit it's just the way it is but this is an earlier version of the deep cut now at this time the deep cut was probably only offered in variable speed and we'll take a look at the next version of the Milwaukee Portaban okay so this is kind of the next iteration but it's not the next chronological one that I'm going to show you the next one I'm going to show you is a little bit older than this but as they develop things um, in the 90s they offered the deep cut with the two speed saw so here's your positive trigger you can hear it clicking and then down here is your speed control and this is really just the same 
trigger and control as the uh, whole hog. Same controller, so that's kind of interesting. Um, as they get a little bit later, you'll see they say high tor torque worm gear. Um, this one's a little bit newer, or at least the gearbox is, and then the guard started to look a little bit different. But this is the same cut as the other one, as the other deep cut saw, same basic thing. This one is also slated to be restored here on the channel at some point. So this is kind of the last version of the corded saw. Now you can see here, even though it's dirty, it's painted. And the trigger isn't hinged any longer. It runs straight in. And it's got that same thing where you turn the thumb wheel and it restricts how far the trigger goes. Um, this saw I actually bought new in the very early 2000s. So kind of an old friend. But... Uh, this is kind of the last iteration of this saw until they kind of got away from it. Uh, like, like we showed just previously, there was a two-speed version that had the newer style guard. We could put that guard on this one if we wanted. But that was really the only changes that they had. As you can see, this is still largely the same saw as that original Portaban. So last version of the die cast uh, aluminum or all cast aluminum saws was indeed a cordless. I think this could be the first full-sized 44 and 7 8 portaband that's cordless. They didn't really change a whole lot on it. Uh, a lot of everything here is the same. The handle was largely different. We can see it's got the V28 handle on it here. Your high and low speeds are in a trigger. No lock. You can, well, you have the center lock if you put it in between high and low. There's your low speed. There's your high speed. And an interesting addition, they actually put a light on them. Which is really cool. Um, they didn't add that to the 120 volt versions, but I guess technically you could. Um, the 28 volt saws are actually pretty good saws. Uh, they didn't perform the best on the V28 batteries, um, but they perform pretty good on the M28 batteries. They're not as fast and as everything as the, the new M18s, but it is still a good cordless saw. And uh, we have one set up here in the shop and we use it for cutting aluminum stock. We got a pretty coarse blade on it and this is what we use. Uh, this has the more modern die cast aluminum saw guard which you can kind of see better here. You can see it's uh, absolutely uh, continuous, you know, a little bit more surface area than the little angle tang that it used to be in the earlier versions. And you can see here it's still that same cut dimensions as they were previously. Still can't quite cut 4 inch conduit with it. But there's the the last of the die cast aluminum saws shall we say. Um, I don't know how prone these were to the, the the tail breaking the casting because you have this much handle sticking out here but all of the previous versions that we showed are very prone to cracking back here, and that is normally their demise. Now, as we showed earlier in the, ch in the video, DeWalt came out with a saw that had a light built in. I think that uh, cordless version was the first uh, attempt, and then Milwaukee completely redid their band saw as well, to try and stay competitive and unfortunately this one doesn't have a cord on it that we can take a look at it but it does indeed have a light right here this does not have a button on it to turn the light on and off the light only actually I'm sorry it does right here it is you do have a button to turn the light on and off um, this is also naturally slated to be restored on the channel here but we just didn't get to it yet um, this featured an adjustable, I don't know if we can get it to move, but it featured an adjustable, there we go, 
guard blade. Uh, naturally, it's missing some screws, so it's very floppy. But you could adjust the guard uh, in and out. Probably made it pretty nice for storing, and that carries through onto the later cordless versions. This is the initial uh, application of the plastic. I know it's all painted and you can't really see it, but this is all plastic. So now, if the saw takes a fall and this breaks, it's going to be a lot easier to replace because it's just screws around the outside of it. There you go. Uh, so they, they're trying to, trying to balance out some of that uh, issue they were having before. Uh, these saws were kind of short-lived in the trades because the cordless ones kind of came out quick. I never used a ton of these. They weren't, I don't recall them as being bad saws, but uh, they did actually incorporate some neat features like a little brush here to try and clean metal chips off of your drive wheel so it doesn't slip as easy and create a issue also with buildup that could potentially take your blade off. Now this particular saw, I believe, is a 2012 model, whereas much of the other ones that we had in the video so far are much older. I do believe the cordless one that we just looked at, the V28, that was, I think, a 2006. So we're moving on through the years here. Uh, they do have the limit for the variable speed is now this uh, wheel kind of going to the DeWalt style, which uh, isn't necessarily bad, it's just a different way of doing it. Probably a little less cumbersome than turning this, you could flick it with your fingers. So, interesting little design traits change in there. Let's take a look at the cordless. So here we have what I consider to be probably the best Milwaukee cordless bandsaw. You can see you have the thumb wheel here, change your speed. You have a good practical lock button that is just locked, can't squeeze the trigger, flip it over, and you can run the tool. Let's put that back on. Um, you also have a light that will time out here in a little bit. With the cordless version, you cannot force the light on. Uh, I'm not quite sure why. It's not like it would really kill the battery, but you, you can't, so that's just that. Um, it does have this modern style foot, which is adjustable. Kind of nice if you're throwing it in a box or something like that. It won't get banged up. Keeps it in the line of the tool. You can also see they have a rafter hook on it, which is kind of nice for hanging it on a tri stand or something like that. And this also includes that plastic braced surround that is easily replaceable. This also has the uh, brush on it. Now this is a 2015 model. So this is, it's got some age on it, but it's not really been through a whole lot. Uh, it's been a really good saw. Something we got new here in the shop and it's been here for since it's new. Uh, but good running saw. We got this set up for metal. Uh, we use the V28 stuff for aluminum, so if you happen to notice in the videos when we're working with one metal or the other, you'll see the different tools come out. Um, so these are pretty easy to, you know, take the batteries on and off. They'll accept any M18 battery. Obviously, the smaller you go, the less it'll run. But in my mind, this is probably the best saw. They have a later version where it's got like a spring return thing here. And it's not that ergonomic. It's kind of a pain to push this and try and squeeze this. It just doesn't work out the best. So that's kind of annoying, but that's that's what they do. So this is probably, I think, the original M18 saw. Good version. Now, to finish the chapter on the full-size porta band, we have one of the newest saws here. Now we had picked this up super cheap because the gentleman that originally bought it thought it was broken. There's a, in my mind, there's an inherent design flaw on these that the sequence of the triggering. I get what Milwaukee's trying to do here. They want you to have two hands on the tool at all times to run it. 
it's a decent idea. But the problem is you have to trigger this trigger first and then this one. And when you're trying to hold this thing, it would be much better if you could squeeze this and it had like a five second delay. And if you didn't squeeze this trigger within those five seconds, then it times out and you have to reset. That way you couldn't defeat this. And if you let go of this, the saw still stops. But I think they're close with this but they need to work on some programming. Um, the idea is good, but the implementation kind of stinks right now because you're trying to get on something and this is the hand you should have firmly affixed and you should be using this hand, you know, your trigger more smoothly for adjustment. So the other problem here too is you squeeze this, you hold this, it runs, but you back off to get another bite or something like that. Then all of a sudden you can't come into it again. You have to reset. As you can see what I did there, you have to squeeze this and then this. And it's kind of hard to get into variable speed that way too. It's, it's more jumpy. It's, it's either, it, it's just not as smooth working. So, I think they're close here, but what they need to do is give us like a five second delay that we can squeeze this one, get ourselves lined up, and start in on the regular trigger like we've all done for, you know, at least with the Milwaukee Port of Bands since 1973. Um, it's just something that as these tools evolve, things like this need to be looked at and adjusted for. Uh, I don't think this is necessarily a bad idea. I know guys, it's going to be polarizing. Guys are going to hate them. And at this point, I got to agree because the implementation of it kind of stinks. But with some adjustment, I think this could be good because you're holding the tool like you should and you should be able to go into the trigger and run it like you always have. Biggest difference is you have to have your hand on that trigger. And obviously, if you let go of it, the saw should stop. So I think that's the biggest thing that they need to look at doing with that. They got a lot of potential for a good, safe, and practical saw to use. Just need some adjustment. So that'll end out our full-size porta band parts. Let's take a look at some of the smaller ones. Now, if you've been around the channel, you know like we like to buy old broken tools here. You can see this one's got yellow paint on it from a previous owner. Uh, I forget what was broken on this one, uh, but we did get it broken and fixed it. This model also has an adjustable foot. It's a much smaller cut, three inch cut, and about a three and a half inch depth, I guess. Yeah, three and a half, three and a quarter ish. So it's just about where the original Porta Band was, actually. Uh, about the same depth there, but not quite the same width. So, kind of interesting how times change. Um, there is a light on this one, but it does time out. It doesn't stay lit. If you don't use the saw, it times out. This version of it has the, what I consider to be the nice lock. And uh, the tool runs good. Uh, we've used it quite a bit here on the channel for building stuff, cutting various size stocks. This is a two-handed tool. Use it as such, uh, but it's good control. Uh, the better 7 8 actually likes to use this one quite a bit for things, cutting stuff, whatever. Uh, but that's uh, the mid-size saws. Now they do have fuel versions out, and uh, I've used some fuel versions, but I don't have any here because I didn't get any broken ones to fix. But uh, this is kind of the, the first version of the mid-size saw, and honestly, for what it is, I think it's a good saw. Um, it's You can't expect it to do what the big saws do. It's not going to have a huge amount of torque. It's just what it is. It's a mid-size saw. Use it for what it is, and you'll be happy with it. And if you've been around the channel, you know what this last one's going to be. This cute little guy. 
Uh, we had done a restoration on the channel with this one and another one. We restored two of them, and uh, they've been working great. Uh, these have been really good saws. Uh, again, you know, this is a inch and it's inch and five eighths, inch and three quarter. This thing's basically designed to cut unistrut. You know, it's uh, that that's the size that you're going. If you're running smaller conduit or anything like that, trade size pipes, you know, one inch or so, this is a great tool to have. Again, smaller tool has the the practical lock that we're all used to. Uh, this is a one-handed tool, and uh, variable speed runs good. Again, not a powerhouse has its use. If you use it within its bounds, cutting typical little stock stuff here and there, it's great. Um, I, I, you know, got some of these for a few friends that we fixed up and stuff like that. And somebody uses it for cutting, you know, mini stock stuff for their lathe and other stuff. It's just a handy tool to have around. So a lot of this comes down to using the tools, what they're designed for. If you're expecting this thing to do what the big full size porta band can do, you're going to be disappointed. But if you're looking for something to cut your you know, small stuff, grab it and cut stuff. This thing's great. Um, now, they do have a fuel version of this out now, which we don't have. Uh, maybe we'll look at getting one at some point, but honestly, this thing does everything we need at this point, so unless we fall into one cheap, we're probably just going to keep on rocking with this one. So there we have it. We looked at a lot of different porta bands. We saw some early ones. We saw how they evolved into the newer ones. And we took a look at a, the way a few of the newer ones could continue to evolve into more useful tools. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was kind of an experimental version of uh, episode for us. Uh, we're kind of feeling our way through things. Um, this sort of history on tools has always been fascinating to us. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.